KTVA News at 6. Right now at 6, a man is facing charges after officials say he entered a hospital and attacked a woman. We have the facts on the case. Plus, some residents in this northeast Mississippi city want a new look for their downtown, but are there enough funds for a change? These stories and much more are straight ahead. Good evening. I'm Terry Smith. And I'm Emily Leonard in for Senya Walls tonight. Thank you so much for joining us for WTVA News at 6. Well, new tonight at 6, as we first reported today on WTVA.com, a local man is behind bars in Monroe County facing charges of kidnapping, sexual battery, and resisting arrest. His name is Gregory Adams, and as WTVA's Wayne Herford reports, Adams is accused of entering Pioneer Hospital, where police say he committed the alleged crimes. Dean police say that on July 11th, 50-year-old Gregory Adams was found sleeping on the streets of Aberdeen and was severely intoxicated, only about 300 yards from Pioneer Hospital. That's when police say he was taken to the medical facility. Uh, he was so impaired that, you know, we did not want to leave him in one laying on the street that, you know, may have caused an accident or may have gotten hit by accident. Chief Randall says doctors at the hospital didn't examine Adams, checked him out, and gave him the okay to leave. Officer pretty much then tried to call the nearest relative to come pick him up there at the hospital, and then Mr. Adams, for some apparent reason, took off running. The chief says Adams ran into the woods near the hospital as officers gave chase. They were then called away on another call. Later, the chief says officers were called back to the hospital for a second time. Uh, we're, we're suspecting on that second call that he never um, actually went back into the wooded area. He had gained access into the hospital and he was somewhere in there hiding. Randall says he does not know how Adams got back into the hospital. At that point in time, when the, I guess the young ladies that worked there realized he was there, they gave us a call. And during that time frame, they was giving us a call. He had grabbed one of them. He says Adams unsuccessfully tried to force a middle-aged female employee to perform sex after he locked her inside of a hospital room. The Aberdeen Fire Department was called in to pry the locked door open. The female employee is in pretty good shape, says Randall, as she was able to fend off Gregory Adams' attack. In Aberdeen, Wayne Herford, WTVA News. Chief Randall says that Adams is not a local resident and he has a Jackson, Mississippi address. He is on a $50,000 bond at the Monroe County Detention Center. The chief says Adams also has a criminal record with the Department of Corrections, which is also involved with the case. The Alcoholic Beverage Control says it conducted a search warrant at the VFW Post 1983 in Kosciuszko earlier this month. Officials say on July 13th, agents found 14 assorted bottles of alcoholic beverages. Kosciuszko is located in Itala County, which is a dry county. Authorities say they issued a citation to 64-year-old Robert Blackstock of Carthage for the possession of whiskey in a dry county. The citation is a misdemeanor with a possible fine of up to $500 and up to three months in county jail. New information tonight. The Mississippi Court of Appeals has upheld the conviction of a man serving life sentences for double murder in Lowndes County. The court today issued the decision in the case of 46-year-old Daniel Paul Koppel. Koppel is serving life sentences in the shooting deaths of James Bennett Mann of Columbus and Mark Cordell, Cordell excuse me, of Birmingham, Alabama at the Elbow Room in Columbus in February of 2011. In his appeal, Koppel claims the state did not prove the shooting was not in self-defense. The evidence did not support the verdict and the judge was wrong not to move the trial out of Lowndes County. Well, how about a new look? Well, that's the request being made of some businesses in one northeast Mississippi city. Hopes are high for a transformation, but as WTVA Susan Parker reports, this is one out-of-pocket expense that many may or may not agree with. Steve White has operated this dry cleaning business since 1982. He's always kept a fresh coat of paint on the building, but the Main Street Design Committee wanted more, a mural. We're very pleased with it. It draws a lot of attention to our building, and we've got a lot of compliments on it ever since. It's that kind of attention Chairperson Kathy Dice wants to offer up to all businesses on Main Street, only it's going to take a personal investment to make it happen. They're saying even though some have said no to them, they have no plans to give up. We have been thrilled with the folks that have bought into the idea. Some people have their own idea of what they want to do with their storefront, which is perfectly fine. 
but we're here to give advice and to help in any way we can. Local artist Deborah Mansfield has offered up some ideas. She came and took photographs of all the before stores. She translated that into watercolor of here's what your store could look like if we put a coat of paint, if we put up an awning, if we put out some planters. Each building owner is hoped to get on board. Doris Williams wants to think about it. I don't think it'll take a lot of money to improve it. But you're going to hold off? I'm going to hold off. Others are excited about the suggestions, including Theodore Lenore. We're going to make the little poles with the red and white stripes, the gloves at the top, to spruce it up to make it look really like a barbershop. Down the street, Jamie Towery has planters and a bench to beautify. More is planned. Oh, it'd be great. No negative. It's all positive. Everything's looking great. Back up the street, Theodore Lenore sees improvements as a win win for everyone. I think. If one person do it, it'll be a trend, and everyone will do it, and it will bring more revenue to the city itself. That is definitely in the plan. In West Point, I'm Susan Parker for WTVA News. A number of business owners are making improvements, but the committee is especially <coughs> excited that the owner of multiple buildings intends to improve all of their properties on Main Street. Owners of vacant buildings are more challenging to recruit. Downtown Tupelo's Main Street Association is asking for your help to continue bringing live music downtown. The fifth season of the Down on Main concert series kicked off last Thursday. The free concerts are put on by a group of volunteers who raise money for the event, mostly through sponsorships. The Main Street Association is encouraging the community to get involved by donating money online through the Kickstarter program. Donors can give as little or as much as they would like. Um, different giving levels, and with each level you get um, different things. You can get t-shirts, signed posters, you can even get a meet and greet with artists. When you go online, it's kickstarter.com, um, and just look up Down on Main um, concert series. It's on our Facebook page. If you'd like to give a donation to help keep live music downtown, you can do it soon. The Main Street Association only has seven more days to reach their goal of $5,000. You can find more information about giving by logging onto our website at WTVA.com. Well, coming up, phones aren't just for making calls and texting. They're saving lives. One Northeast Mississippi hospital is testing out a new program that revolves around phones. We'll explain that after the break. The temperatures.